All right, after a long week away, we're back with the dolls. Uh, I was in the Eastern Caribbean. Cause some, I, this is embarrassing. I was in the Caribbean and I basically don't know where I was. Like I could tell you the names of the places, but I could not tell you their relative geographic positions. I was in the British Virgin Islands. I was in the US Virgin Islands and I was in the Bahamas. Is that, the, is that the Eastern Caribbean or the Western Caribbean? Western. Okay. Eastern. Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. That is the American zone. It's kind of crazy. I really, like, I can't say this without it coming across as offensive. But, um, like, it's, maybe it's okay that it's offensive, uh, in a way at least. I lived in Korea for a year, and the kinds of like uh, people that come from North America to teach English in South Korea, you meet some normal, nice people, and then you meet some insane people who are escaping from mistakes that they made in their life, um, and they're like, this is my only way out. You know, you, you meet like someone who just finished college, and they're like, I can pay off part of my student loans, get some work experience, and also travel. And then you meet some dudes that are like, I'm 42, and I just got divorced, and I needed to do something. And I'm like... Brother, this is, not, this is not supposed to be your domain. You could go for it, don't get me wrong, but like, that's scary. When there's a 22-year-old who just graduated from college who's like, I'm going to teach English in Korea, you're like, okay, give it a try. When you're like, I'm 53 and this is my third year, you're like, what? It's, I'm not saying you're doing anything crazy. I'm just saying it's, it's a different vibe. And then the kinds of dudes that I was seeing who obviously had restarted their lives on the American Virgin Islands was like that cranked up to infinity. Like there were dudes who were just like, I don't know how to explain it. They were just pirates. I don't know if maybe they were like involved in some kind of tourist operation, but they were just walking down the street dressed as pirates. And I know what you're going to say. Those are actors. But it was like... They were method acting, if that is... <laughs> like, they did not look like they came from uh, Fayetteville, and then they'd been in the U.S. Virgin Islands for two days. It's like they had lived there for, like, years. And they were having, like, rum punch at 8.07 a.m., and it was not day one. I apologize, my words are not going to connect well today. We just got back like literally eight hours ago. Like our flight landed nine hours ago, waited for our suitcase for a little bit, got home. My daughter decided like she didn't want to go to sleep. Um, so here's what happened, okay? We, we were on a cruise. You caught me. You caught me. We disembarked 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. We said, you know, our flight wasn't until 7.30 that night. We said, hey, let's take an Uber to the Kennedy Space Center. We, we had 12 hours. We went to the Kennedy Space Center. Great time. One of the best museums, if you want to call it that, that I've ever been to in my entire life. My daughter went on the KSC Spaceport Experience and got a cool silver coin from the dude running the booth because we explored the exoplanet Trappist-1 together. We waited uh, 40 minutes for lunch at the Orbit Cafe. And she, I mean, she was going crazy on that slide. I don't know if you've ever been to the, the Planet Play section of, uh, of the Kennedy Space Center. But anyway, it was great. Then we said, okay, so we were at the, the Space Center for eight hours or something like that. We were there for basically from opening till almost close. We said, let's go to the airport. We go to the airport. We say, hey, the kiosk told us to check in. Uh, at the desk because they needed more information. The lady behind the counter said, oh yeah, all of our flights have been canceled for today. And I said, oh, okay, um, why? And they said, we don't know, air traffic control, which seems kind of crazy. So we said, all right, whatever. And we start calling around to hotels uh, in Orlando, trying to figure out um, where we can stay. You know, we go to the hotel in the airport and they're like, we're fully booked up as of like a minute ago. We try to book at uh, all the places that they gave us that are like, we're booked, but try these places. Someone should be ready. Nah, not ready. Um, finally, we ended up staying at a hotel. And I kid you not, I had no idea it existed. It's called Gaylord Palms. 
which is, I'm assuming, named after the person who was the founder of the first one. Uh, and it was like the, the I don't want to say the only hotel that didn't have no vacancy or had some vacancy, but it was like, it was getting pretty close. So I called Gaylord Palms because uh, Google's AI search engine said it is a shuttle from the airport to Gaylord Palms. We book it and then I look at their website and they're like, unfortunately, we don't offer a shuttle. So I call and I get an AI assistant that says, welcome to Gaylord Palms customer service. Could you please iterate your concerns and I'll be happy to help you? And then I'm like, uh, yeah, do you have a shuttle to the airport? And then I wait, I hear like <laughs> the fucking Amazon rainforest is being fed into the large language processing model, et cetera, et cetera. And then... Um, she said, unfortunately, at present, we don't offer uh, a shuttle from the airport to Gaylord Palms, but there's plenty of transportation options, including like a rental car terminal on floor one and arrivals or something. And I said, OK, thank you. And she said, wait, before you go, would you like to answer a few questions about your customer service experience today? And I felt so stupid because I, I, it's a robot, but I was still like using manners. I was like, no, actually, we're really busy. We have to go. And then the robot said, hang on a minute. I'm going to transfer you to someone who can help you. And I just hung up. I was like, I'm not going to call the customer service line. And now I got to do a survey about customer service. Like, what, what are you talking about? I know that how this sounds, but pay me. <laughs> If it's like, hey, you get a, a free, you know, mojito when you show up at the hotel, if you do the survey, then I'll be like, yeah, I thought it fucking sucked. Please hire a real person and tell the motherfucker at Google that spider crawled your website that they got the information wrong. You just want me to do it for free? Zero chance. Not going to happen. Now, at the end of the cruise, am I going to fill out the fucking survey for the, the dining team and the, the stateroom host and stuff like that? Yeah, that's like people's lives okay but for a robot no i'm not doing it for a robot you ever figure out why the flights were canceled yeah so there was a thunderstorm or two thunderstorms but i guess they can't tell you um that it's a thunderstorm because then you might be mad so instead they have to say air traffic control won't let us fly as if WestJet is like, bro, we would love to fly through the hurricane right now. Um, we like, we'll nut up. We'll go balls on the table. We're not even sweating it. We'd love to get you guys home. But all oh, air traffic control won't let us because there's like a 1% chance, which is really, really high, by the way, but a 1% chance the plane will get struck by lightning and fucking burn up. Even if they weren't canceled, it could have been a Boeing. Uh, well, we were, on a, we were on a MAX 8. And can I tell you something? It's a very comfortable plane. When the doors aren't coming off mid-flight, it's a much... We, we took a 737-6 from Orlando to Calgary, and it was cramped. It was fine. Like, it's air, it's air travel. It's not that bad. But then when we got on the 737-800, I was like, at least we might be experiencing a rapid decompression event in fucking style, bro. It's got the mood lighting. It's got the... As far as I know, all the doors were screwed on because we made it. Like, it was nice. Calgary's airport is actually not bad. I hate to hand it to him, but it's true. When we landed in Calgary at 10 p.m. Calgary time, I was like 100% sure that everything was going to be closed because my preconceived notion of Alberta is that it's all 65-year-old cattle ranchers, which is obviously ignorant. Landed. I was like, oh, fuck, everything's closed. Walked to my gate. There were like eight open restaurants. In Vancouver, there would not, everything would be closed. You would be trying to eat dinner from like snacks you cobbled together from like a Hudson News or something. I got to hand it to the Calgary airport. I also have to apologize to the good people of Orlando, Florida. When we went there in August, I was like, at the Disney parks, everybody is paid to be nice to you and they're all very nice. As soon as you get out, into the wilderness in Orlando, everybody's insane. But this time, everybody was really nice. People were, were like very normal and cordial. And I'm starting to think that it's just like uh, last August, everybody was pissed off that 
it was like 40 degrees Celsius and 99% humidity. So we would be like, hello, could you drive us to the airport? And they'll be like, yes, but maybe you'll die like on the way. This time it was like very comfortable and everybody was just, they were driving relatively sanely. I think there's two kinds of people, you know, last couple of days of the cruise, I promise this isn't, I, I have tons of material that I've already workshopped, okay? Um, like uh, my Uber driver recognizing me as uh, that effing guy who made the video about picky eaters and just swearing like crazy while my three and a half year old daughter was in the car seat right next to us. Otherwise, nice guy though. Um, failing some charisma checks. Like when I was at the, I, I, I think it was because I was growing like an old man beard because I was too lazy to shave. All of my normal quips that boomers usually laugh at, they did not find funny at all. Like at the airport, I was, I pissed at a urinal because all the stalls were uh, booked, you know, they were reserved. And as I was zipping up, I, I walked backwards and I bumped into a guy and he said, sorry. And I'm, I said, sorry, because we're in Canada. And then I said, looks like I need a backup camera. And he just grunted. And I was like, that's pretty good for off the cuff. I guess most people in the men's room like don't want to have some witty repartee like that. Also, I got a massage on the cruise and you're, they bring you into like an antechamber uh, before the massage where it's just you and a bunch of other people that are naked under their robes uh, waiting for the masseuse to come out and say your name. The masseuse came out and said, Ryan. And I said, yeah, that's me. And then we talked for like 30 seconds and a dude across the room said, uh, wait, did you say Ryan or Brian? And then she checked the thing and she said, Ryan. And he was like, oh, I guess you've got a Ryan and a Brian in here. And I said, hey, you must be the guy who keeps taking my Starbucks orders. And the dude did not get the joke at all. I think he thought that I was actually like threatening him or at least accusing him of something that he obviously did not do. And then they just pulled me into the massage room. And I, I didn't even get a chance to be like, do you get it? <laughs> And then, so after the, the massage is like half a massage and half a sales call. This is how my, my charisma was zero, bro. My, uh, uh, the, my masseuse, you know, they're like, okay, get dressed. And like, I have a consultation for you afterwards. And she's telling me like, she's like, your shit is all fucked up. Like, I know you said you don't have that much muscle tension. And you have the most sedentary job of all time, but your shoulders are like fucking disasters. So let me, she gave me like a regimen of stuff I need to do. And of course it's all like, you know, you need this proprietary massage oil and this scrub and this gel and stuff like that. So she pulled all three of them out and I pulled a little move that I've done on the massage before. I said, oh, actually I don't need these because my wife had a massage yesterday and she bought them and she fucking nut checked me and said, I checked your room data and your wife didn't buy this stuff. And I was just kind of like stuck. And I said, Oh, well, I don't think I need it. And then she said, Okay, that's fine. But you definitely need another massage on the cruise. And I said, Sure, let me just go back to my room and check, like when I have time. And she's like, Oh, we looked at your schedule. Uh, it looks like you have time on like day six. Should I book it? And I was like, I just had to check with my wife first. <laughs> I just signed the receipt and got the hell out of there, man. She was like doing some high pressure sales tactics. It was crazy. She's like employee of the month. The messed up part is it was like the best massage I've ever had in my entire life. She's got to be employee of the month because her massaging was great. And then the sales like... I mean, she's got to be moving tons of those fucking, like, Wish.com massage gels, man. No, I did not go back. But and I'm, I swear to you, this is 100% true and fact-checked by real American patriots. Um, on the, there was, like, a day at sea where I guess they didn't have enough people on the, in the spa. So there was, like, a spa worker that was just going out and, like, asking people to, like, hey, are you interested in coming to the spa? So I was just walking around and uh, someone with the spa uniform was like, sir, are you interested in getting another massage? And I said, actually, I've already been. I was like, this time I'm prepared for this one. And then she said, okay, sir, very good. And I looked back and I was like, that was my masseuse, bro. Like I, I, I was literally just misfiring nonstop on like none of the quips landed. 
nobody thought I was funny. They hated my jokes. I, my, my wife eats 60% of her meal. The server's like, was it okay? Do you want something else? She's like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm just not that hungry tonight. They take my plate. It's empty. I say, mine was horrible. They go, sir, really? Is there something I could do? Would you like me to pass on some feedback? I say, no, no, I'm joking. It's because I ate it all. That I said it was not good, but I ate it all. Do you get it? I caps the door. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I was, I was trying so hard, man. I failed all the QTEs. I don't know what happened, man, but people on Twitch are loving it, so we got something going on. Also, so many people on the... I, I have a very elitist take, and I'm, I think that it's true, but I'm willing to admit that it's a, possibly a bad opinion, and you can minus to me for it. I think people in cities get a bad rap for being impolite. And people in rural areas get too much glazing for being nice and well-mannered. And I, this resurfaces for me on every single cruise I go on, where there's people from all sorts of environments, but a lot of them are coming from, you know, the South or the Midwest and obviously like Indiana, you know, places where they're the only people around for like a hundred kilometers. Um, and hey, thank you, honey. Well, thank you for the gem. It's a sapphire. Thanks so much. This is what you got on your pirate trip, right? One for everyone. One for everyone. Did you hear that? So here's, here's the genesis of this take. When we're on the cruise, there's 4,000 people. The ship is huge, but I mean, there's lots of people. Plus there's like, you know, 1,500 staff or something. You're, you're always, the elevators are always busy. You're always waiting in line to get places where everybody has to go, et cetera, et cetera. It seems to me, people who live in urban environments, they got no problem. They line up, they uh, wait their turn because they know that you've got to, you know, that's, that's the way that you get in fast is by everybody, you know, doing what they can to make it as fast as possible by just basically following the procedure. They hold the door for the elevator and let the elevator fill up. And then when, you know, you get on the elevator on floor two and you're going to floor eight, when it opens on floor three and it's full so nobody can get in and it opens on floor four and floor five and floor six, you don't get pissed off and go like, they got to do something to fix this. Bro, everybody's got to get to their rooms and like you, we're all fat and a little intoxicated because of the fact that we've been at a, a cruise for like six days. So like, just take the stairs or stop complaining. The, the amount of times we would have like, so here's the two very real stories. I got on an elevator by myself. There was a three-person family, dad, mom, kid. When the door opened up, they went, ah, and then I got on, I was like, whatever, you know. Some people go on vacation to relax, and some people go on vacation to get stressed out. I hit my button and then um, moved away from the panel. We're on floor three. I'm going up to floor eight. The dad holds the closed door button. Like, he's, he saw it on, like, an Instagram reel or something like that. Like, if you hold the door button, it sends a message to Elevator HQ that's like, send this shit straight to my room. Um, and then it went, like, two floors up, and it opened up because somebody else needed to use the elevator. And, like, they were stressed out. And the dad was like, well, I tried. Like, it was, it was insane. Like, it was like, a, a, you could fit 25 people on the elevator. What do you think you get your own three-person elevator on a cruise ship with 4,000 people? It's insane. And then, uh, like, two days later, we, uh, we were on the elevator, and it's super busy. Doors open up. Intoxicated woman in her 20s says, holy S, you know, there's, it's a Disney cruise. There's, like, 15 kids on the elevator. Whatever, it happens. Um... They, they pile into the elevator. It's a, a, a man and two women roughly around the same age. The doors open up, and then uh, the one family that was closest to the panel gets out. And then the woman says to what I presume was her husband, she was like, hey, can you hit the, uh, our floor button? And he said, I wanted to, but the effing moron was blocking the panel. Sorry, brother. Everybody's trying to get where they need to go. You could just 
reach in and say, excuse me, or you could, you could say, hey, could you hit number seven or something like that? Like, what's going on? I'm not suggesting everybody that lives in a rural area is like this. I'm merely suggesting that you're used to this level of socialization if you're constantly bumping into people and saying, excuse me, sorry, blah, blah, blah. If you're in an area where you can, you know, fart in your backyard without your neighbor being like, whoa, what the hell did you eat? Then this is probably a little bit unusual for you. How'd you know they were from a small town area? I'm making an unfair assumption based on the NASCAR hat. And that might not be true. They might live in the biggest city in, in Kentucky for all I know, okay? I'm just saying, I think people are like in the, when people come to the city and they're like, oh, nobody's like polite to me in the city. Well, I'm like, well, you fucking wouldn't be polite either if you were surrounded by people all the time. If you were polite to everybody, you'd never get anything done. But then all of a sudden, you know, you got a, a 100 person line to get into the restaurant and people are like, whoa, this is crazy. They got to fix this. Or like, you, sometimes you, so we went to like, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, you go on like a, a glass bottom boat tour and people that work in like insurance sales are like, why are they doing it like this? Brother, what the fuck do you know about operating a glass bottom boat tour on Tortola in the British Virgin Islands? They've been doing, they've been in business for like a, at least a few years, I'm imagining at this point. It's crazy. Like you, you don't work in the industry and you're like, well, if I did it, I would give you a bigger cup of fish food or something like that. I'm like, you don't know anything, man. I, th I agree. Like there's, all, there's, maybe it's not just North American. I think there's like a North American idea that you have to like optimize every situation you're in. You just fucking chill, bro. They're going to get, you're not the... Same thing when we get off the Disney cruise. People are like, I don't know why they do it like this. you got to be at breakfast at like 6.30 a.m. They, yeah, they serve you breakfast like at your table. And the same people who served you dinner eight hours ago are dressed in different outfits serving you breakfast. But like, I'm a little tired. Why do they do it like this? Why do they do it like this? I'm like, brother, this is like Disney cruise fucking 13,803. I think they got it pretty sore. I'm not saying there's not room for improvement in some aspects, but come on, man. Like they've been, they've been doing this for a bit. You really think like one 52 year old helicopter pilot's gonna go on there and be like, hey, you ever think about letting them sleep in for an extra two hours? Holy shit, bro. I never thought about it. We needed someone with your unique genius to, to blow this stuff up for us. By the way, can I tell you? I had two very interesting Uber experiences while we were in the United States of America. The first was when the Uber driver recognized me at the end of the ride and said, hey, random question, are you a streamer? And I said, I am. And then he said, are you the streamer who did that clip about the picky eaters? And I said, yes, that's probably me. And then he was like, I was looking at you in the mirror and I was like, is this the effing guy? Is this the effing guy who did that picky eaters thing? This effing guy? And I was, I was just laughing and going, ha ha ha. You know, he was, he was listening to Fahrenheit 451 audiobook. He seemed like a cool guy. He said, if you have any questions about Orlando, let us know or let me know. But then I also had an Uber drive where I was 100% sure that Kate and I were going to be killed, full stop. What happened? On the day we were leaving Orlando to get on the boat, we got an Uber from our hotel uh, and we went into the ride. We loaded in our suitcase and stuff like that. The guy seemed very nice. Uh, we got to like the first turn. We drove like 100 meters. And then he said, whoa. Did you cancel on the app? What happened? And then like we looked at his little kiosk and we looked at our phone and like somehow the ride had become disconnected. And uh, he said, wait, so like this happens now and then? Do you want me to bring you back to the hotel? And I said, yeah, I guess we can do that. He said, or I could just drive you all the way to the cruise terminal anyway and you could just you know venmo me or whatever and i said okay um let's go back to the hotel but kate was like that sounds good <laughs> i was like you know what we're gonna get killed i was like checking my phone to make sure that like we were still moving to the east everything ended up working out just fine but there was like 45 minutes of me being like this is the end of my life Hi, honey. 
Whoa, such pretty nails. And, and you get to have it too. Yeah, I'll take some when I'm finished, okay? You can take the green one. Okay. I can't do a tea party right now, honey. Can you do a tea party with mommy and daddy will do it after work? Sorry. Only sparkly nails. Only sparkly nails can do the tea party? Yes, only sparkly nails. Kids will go. Oh, so you invited me to the tea party, but I'm not even allowed to come. Okay. Thanks, mom. <laughs> and people are saying he was just cutting out Uber. Honestly? Cool rock, honey. You can keep it. Okay, you can take that rock. I kind of respected it. If, as long as he didn't kill me, I was happy to pay him cash and cut out Uber. I would much rather do a taxi than an Uber, except for the fact that, like, probably the last 10 taxis I took before Uber came to Vancouver drove, like, 40 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, two centimeters from the bumper of the car in front of them while talking on their cell phone incredibly loudly the whole time and, like, asking me the route that I want to go to the airport. And I'm like, I don't know, brother. You're literally a professional driver. That's what my Ubers do now? <laughs> well, we need a new Uber, man. We need, we need comfortable Uber. You should be able to hit like a button on your Uber drive that is like, don't drive fast. Or if you're in a rush, you could fucking click drive fast. But I'm like, I would, I would give you like an extra 5% tip if you just didn't have me like holding the handle in the Chrysler Pacifica the whole time. Also, I got uh, verbally abused at the Orlando airport. There was a convenience store where I bought some snacks that also had a bar in it. And the dude uh, came up with his empty glass and said, hey, can I get a Modelo? But please rinse the glass. I had an IPA in it. And I said, did you like it? And he said, no. They have a Belgian beer, a Mexican beer, and a, an IPA. And if I had my choice, I would rather go to Belgium or Mexico instead of wherever they make IPAs. I was like, all right, buddy. I laughed and said, haha, good point. But in my head, I was like, I'm, I'm flying back to Vancouver in like 15 minutes, dickhead. <laughs> we don't want you either, motherfucker. Also, can I tell I, I, I've mentioned many times before how I, I rolled a nat one on my charisma on this vacation. On the flight from Calgary to Vancouver, you know, it's late. Everybody's tired, including the staff. We've been ascending for six, seven minutes, right? It's a little rocky, but my bladder is going to explode. I look up, no seatbelt sign. Nobody else is up. I say, fuck it, nuts on the table. I'm going piss. I walk back to the lavatory. I see that the flight attendant is still strapped into the damn jump street like the Dark Knight Rises. He gives me one look and says, sir, you have to sit down. He like, like I'm an idiot. He was like, sir, you have to sit down when the seatbelt sign is on. I looked at him. I looked at their display. There's no seatbelt sign. And I just shrugged my shoulders and went back to my seat. And then that same dude was doing the like drink and snack service. And uh, he said, can I get you guys anything? I said, sure, I'll have a Diet Coke. Um, and then when he handed it to me, at the exact same time he handed it to me, he had three cookies in his hand. I didn't know that in advance. I said, and can I get some pretzels? And the dude's face went from like the fake smile to like a very serious, neutral tone. Because um, he's like, I'm really giving this guy three cookies. And he said, and some pretzels. And then when I took the pretzels, I said, thank you. And he said, no problem. Is there anything else? And I said, nah, I'm good. I don't think he realizes that like, I know how to fly like as a passenger on the airplane is actually very easy it was the pilot that made the mistake by not turning on the seatbelt sign and i'm being unfairly judged as being entitled to the piss of my own bladder because the passenger did or the pilot didn't turn the seatbelt sign on he probably didn't give a shit nah man he was pissed <laughs> also I think they've made the conduct of flights too safe. You can't fucking do anything. 
I feel like you should be able to piss whenever you want on the airplane. As A, you have to be in the bathroom, obviously, with the toilet seat up. But like, I think it's, it's the skier's rule. It's buyer beware. If you got turbulence, but you got a piss, what are you supposed to say? Your bladder's full. You're like, hey, just a second, buddy. There's an indeterminate period of turbulence here because we're, we're flying through the fucking air. I mean, I get, you could like yell at me. It's never happened to this extent because I'm an adult, so I go pee before I get on the airplane too. But like, I feel like you just got to eat it sometimes. They're like, sir, you can't go to the bathroom. And you're like, you got to stop me. Then you got to wait 20 minutes because some motherfucker's cooking shrimp scampi in the airplane toilet. You're so right. You got to kick that fucker out. The dude's probably giving him pretzels and cookies, not even stressing out about it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I wasn't even holding the button that time, man. I'm rebelling. I'm, I'm not pissing whenever I want. I, I don't want to, you know, be a square peg. But I'm... I'm genuinely, I, I think I'm becoming the guy that's breaking all the rules. Well, at, at the very least, let me tell you my philosophy. I am no longer following rules that were put in place exclusively to deter bad actors when I'm not a bad actor. If a rule is just in place to ensure compliance for no reason, I will not be doing it. But that's okay because it's not a problem. I'm, I will not be putting my phone into airplane mode unless it's low on battery. I will not be doing the survey after a call with an AI customer service representative from Gaylord Palms Hotel in sunny Kissimmee, Florida. Why not? Because fuck you, that's why. I don't want to. <laughs> Is doing a survey a rule? Listen, buddy, it's not a fully realized worldview yet. I'm, I'm figuring it out as I go, okay? I got a lot of stuff that they don't come up with the campaign in like one day. Unless you're Vivek Ramaswamy, in which case. I hope that that was only one day or day one. Right, Squeaks? I don't know if you're still here. And I'm sick of the, all the signs in the bathroom telling me what to do. How you think I'm going to take advice from someone that can't even make like doors that don't have three inch gaps. So everybody looks at my cock while I'm in the toilet taking a diarrhea shit. You're not a, a, a trusted source for information. You can't even make a door that... What, what are people doing in these bathrooms, man? Why are all the locks broken? Why are the toilets never flush? Why are the dudes horking 85% of a 90-minute flight? Like, what, what happened to society, dude? <clears throat> Hello, honey. Mommy, I that Oh, my God. What are you doing with that flashlight? It's for looking for you. Oh, you found me. Oh, for hidden potions. Oh, hidden persons, like myself. Yeah. Okay, honey. What? I think you should go up and see mommy. Daddy's, daddy's doing a puzzle right now. Okay, come. I can't come. I gotta get some work done. Hi. Can you say hi to Chad? Hi. But can you make a surprise? Can I make a surprise for you? I'll see what I can do, okay? For now, go have some fun with mommy, okay? Well, I know you got lots of surprises, though, right? Need more. You need more, <laughs> and that's why we can't stop making the tech, man. That's why we can't stop. By the way, I don't know if you can see the light reflected on my face right now. I w there's a, a culture on the Disney cruise, okay? Of um, it's called pixie dusting. You give other rooms on the cruise ship uh, little trinkets and gifts and stuff, especially if they have kids. Because the kid, you, what's your favorite part of going on a Disney cruise? Surprise. The surprises, right? I wish all families that are putting 35 million lumen flashlights and LEDs into these things a very stop right now, please. Any parent will tell you, I, the kids love it. But what are the parents doing putting like a, a laser pointer that could take down a 737-8 Max in the mailbox? Like some, they, they put in like, oh my God, you scared me. 
They put in like candy and stuff, and I'm like, that's great. I'll have half, she'll have half. She's three and a half. I'm keeping her safe, right? But then they put in like a, literally like a police flashlight, and I'm like, why would you put that, why would you give that to a child in a, in a confined space? Like we were on the cruise. Here, come here, come here. And uh, she said, Daddy, close your eyes. And I said, okay. I closed my eyes. And she said, okay, open them. And she had two incredibly strong LEDs that came into our like ship mailbox. And she was holding them like a centimeter away from her eyes. And I was like, you gotta stop that. Why, why were they giving us these LEDs in the first place? The other, the, the food is good though. Yeah, oh, hey, why would you put my chapstick under the desk? Now I can't get it. Here, go, go up and see mommy. She's calling you. Bring your flashlight. Okay, okay, go ahead. I forgot what I was talking about. I think we did pretty good, man. We've been live for almost five hours, and I, I barely forgot that I had spent two weeks, like, only uttering, like, uh, my dessert order. I think we did pretty well, man. Well, and quips that didn't really go off, but you were only gone for a week. Well, hey, for once, I'm doing what you guys do. I'm counting the Saturdays and Sundays as well, so it's almost two weeks. You had the wrong crowd? You're telling me, brother, you will not catch my ass heading down to the Walt Disney Theater at 8.45 p.m. to see a dude who won Las Vegas Comedy Magician of the Year two years running? It's just not going to happen. But he fucking slayed, apparently. People were saying it was a once-in-a-lifetime. I'm not even knocking the guy with his Michael Scott energy, okay? He had a, a very receptive audience. Me trying to do the open mic on the cruise, but it's all bits about how I have disdain for my fellow passengers, even though we're all in this together. Have you ever noticed that the people that move the slowest are in the biggest hurry? <laughs> they would throw me overboard, for sure. But there is some truth to that, bro. I don't know what it is. You're like in a line with people. And you're moving like, I'm moving as fast as the dude in front of me is moving. He's moving as fast as the dude in front of him is moving. And then dude just gets behind you and goes like, can you believe this? And I'm like, brother, of course. It's a cruise full of old guys. It's 7 a.m. and the buffet opens at 7. We're all, we're all going, of course. You know, when they get up there, you'd think they'd be fucking the Flash, right? But instead, they go, oh, do I want dark roast or light roast? And what kind of coffee? I've only had Folgers for the last 32 years. What do I want, Colombian or Sumatran? And you're like, it's the same carafe, man! Hi, honey. Nice cup. Let's see how it drinks. Show me. Whoa, it's like a, a curly straw. Did you see that? Can you hold it up to the camera? You're like right, right here. Ooh. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't stand on the garbage can lid, please. Are, are you Oscar? Wow, so cool, so cool. What did they say to it? They said, wicked. They said, that's amazing. Also, then the dudes on the cruise, they get like the coffee cup and then they put the milk in it and then they go to the, the sugar and the cream and the Splenda and the Sorbitol and the Stevia and, the, it, and they examine it like it's a, a wine cellar. Hmm, what, what would be the best sugar or fake sugar to put in my coffee this morning. Am I in a stevia in the raw mood today? Certainly, it couldn't be nothing or just a little bit of regular sugar. That, that's bad for you. Instead, mm, can I get a little bit of simulated? And, and then they put the stuff in and they stir it, but they don't move away from the place where you grab the stuff. 
so that other people could have the luxury of having the same choice that they have. There's a little counter behind them where they're supposed to put the cup and then they stir and put the lid on. Instead, they're doing it in front of the carafe and you're like, brother, there's a little spot to the side. Everybody wants coffee. You're not the, you think you're the only dude who likes coffee? Not a relatable bit. Listen, I can't say what I want to say because of the fact that um, my child is right next to me. Why is the onus on the streamer to be relatable? How about you start living life like me? Instead, the onus is on me to construct a, a single sentence that the entire population of Earth can relate to simultaneously. That's unrealistic. How about if you want to get more meat out of the bone here? You start living like I do. You know what I'm saying? No. Nope. She said no. Now that's relatable. 